or being at, uh, at, at, at the desk somewhere and not got coming to a training center where everything is like uh, built. So they want to have it more mobile, more flexible. Uh, and that's why, for example, Innoactive is a big partner uh, and uh, a great partner in the B2B part, a mature company already. This, this, the next example, uh, and this is really thrilling, is augmented reality multiplayer gaming. And um, Pokemon Go, who's a Pokemon Go player from your here? So normally you have 50%, so at least we have 10% of people uh, experience Pokemon Go. So when can we go out in, in, a, in a mobility scenario and augmented reality is now the next big thing which is going to happen also in a multiplayer environment. And um, Niantic, the company from Pokemon Go, uh, they have one kind of dodgeball game called Project Neon. Um, where you can play, as you can see in the video, um, you can play and dodgeball together. Uh, is it now an environment where you just have a kind of empty warehouse, you want to do it? No, you want to do it outside. And therefore you need mobility networks. And you want to have many players at the same time. And this is the beauty of 5G. With 4G you can do also gain a lot of things. Uh, but when you have more and more players in one cell, you need this capacity increase. You need this multiple lanes on the motorway uh, that everybody gets good quality and not just one player gets it. Or when others are coming in, nobody gets it and everybody gets the full quality. So that's um, not, and this is really, this is a, a, not a demo uh, video in that perspective. We experienced that at Mobile World Congress this year in February. and. As I said in the beginning, I, I want to create these moments where, where people say, oh, this was different. There's an, in a, there's an, there's an emotion uh, connected to the application. And on these pictures, you see in the middle, the guy who's holding the hand, and it's really from the, I mean, he's really laughing, and it feels really great. This is the CEO of Samsung. That's DJ Cole. He played with Claudia Neymar, who is uh, my boss, and she's the board member of Deutsche Telekom. You see on the uh, uh, on the left there, she's also very much up. I never saw her so relaxed in business life at, at this moment. Yeah, so it was really like she was heavily immersively in the uh, um, in the situation, uh, and they played with Tim Hutgers, who failed to open the app, so he was out in the beginning, and uh, with John Hankey from Niantic, an and, and inventor of uh, Pokemon Go. And so this was a great event. Um, it was so popular at Mobile World Congress that the guys from Microsoft HoloLens came to, came to our booth uh, as well. I wanted to see what we were going to do there. So I think with the reaction of the humans, um, and we start doing something different. So my next example is a little bit more quiet one. It's the one uh, which we do with Beethoven. We have a big um, uh, anniversary in the next year uh, of Beethoven in my home city of Bonn. And um, uh, it's an augmented reality tourism tour, a city walk. Yeah? So where you can use your normal phone. With the AR kits and the phones, you can really go there, uh, walk the city, and see, oh, this is the, the, the building where it's, where it's born, and this is uh, how it looked like at that time. There could be an avatar in there. <coughs> uh, I, I think this is a great opportunity to make cities more immersive. <coughs> and um, it's a first step. The mobile phone is the first step, and what's going to happen after a while when you're walking in the city like this, I mean, after 20 seconds, your arm gets tired, yeah? So in the end, the next phase is that you want to have it on your glasses, yeah? So we will see uh, further AR <coughs> tethering on glasses in the future. So my fourth, fourth example <coughs> is the one, whenever we showcase things, this is the one where people stay for a very long time. Uh, this is the one where you have a queue and people want to experience that. And this is full body VR. A company from, from the Netherlands uh, doing that, and you're really wearing a suit, and uh, you don't have, uh, the, and the controller is your body. So you have really body control, immersive body control. You're steering the internet or the application of this game, the game with your body. Um, <coughs> Why is it so fun? Because you really dive into a new situation. Uh, is it just for gaming? No, it's also for training reasons. And um, the limitations of this company is normally you can do it in a like three by three uh, square uh, with uh, some Wi-Fi connections uh, or millimeter wave technologies, uh, but you're limited in the space. 
And the customers from this company, they want to do it outdoor. They want to do outdoor trainings. They want to do outdoor playful things like, I don't know, paintball, whatever, uh, but also trainings. And uh, guess what you think of, like military, you can think of a lot of um, uh, activities who want to have 25 people outdoor in an immersive experience. <coughs> this is really different. This is really different. And this is also an application where you forget the time. You forget that you wear these glasses because you're, you're five, six, seven, ten minutes uh, in the game and, um, and, and you have to see the pictures and the, the, the people afterwards so they really tell you that this is different. Again, a little bit more quiet scenario, but also very powerful is a home scenario where you have augmented um, at home when watching, uh, for example, sports. You get additional information on your screen or in your glasses. This is a case of Magic Leap, uh, uh, on a Magic Leap, but it could be any other augmented reality glasses as well. Uh, if it's Magic Leap or others, they have SDKs and they have also from need application partners to bring their products onto their screens. Um, so you have additional information when, when watching um, the sports. I think sports is what internationally is one of the content categories uh, that drives in, uh, into the 5G and edge computing uh, because uh, people uh, have the opportunity to experience more at home or to have additional screens also as um, uh, we heard from France uh, Telecom this morning or from Orange this morning um, uh, to have it on site. So that's, this, uh, uh, that's a good one. And then uh, the last one I would show is on automotive. Uh, yes, we have this situation and we as an industry said, yeah, you know, 5G slash uh, autonomous driving, which is not true. Uh, uh, autonomous means autonomous, so the car is driving without a network, uh, hopefully in that perspective. So I don't want to be the one to be responsible for, uh, for the brake in the car, but um, the cars of the future are 100% connect connected. And a car which is driving autonomous needs to have a connection. Uh, at least for one security reason. Whenever the car and the algorithm doesn't know what to do, you need a teleoperator in the back to tell the car what to do, or to take over and drive the car uh, to the side, whatever. And this is a, this is, will, be, will be a natural backup. Uh, so it must, uh, so connectivity is a must given uh, in the future. Um, so, but this will also drive um, a bit of, will bring our uh, decades to a completely different. Uh,